little test you guys are going to take is really similar to this. The only thing I'm thinking about doing different is instead of having a separate velocity and position graph like we have here, I'm thinking about foregoing the position graph completely and having at the end of the velocity graph portion, you have to create a position graph from the velocity graph. That's the only thing I'm thinking about doing differently. Um, I don't think the position graph is all that important. In fact, I don't know if all this graphing stuff is all that important to have on the actual exam, but I want to kind of shorten that section down a little bit and make sure you have enough time to adequately do the multiple choice. Last year, students reported that the multiple choice was hard and that they wanted a little more time on it. So I'm going to try and balance that out a little bit. So I'm going to go through one of these and I would encourage you to ask questions as we, as we go through it. I might call upon you guys to kind of help me out with it but I also am going to be saying the things that are going to be on the test. So when I say something that's going to be on the test, I will preface it by saying, this is a piece of information I am testing. And uh, that's kind of a signal to you guys that I'm going to find a way to ask a question related to that piece of information. So there are several things about both of these graphs that you do need to know. And so when I talk about it, I want to be really clear. Uh, let's talk about the position graph first. Um, the questions that are here are designed to look for certain things like I want you to know I am testing to see if you know that the slope of the position graph is velocity not just speed it is velocity it tells you not only how fast you're going but in what direction and although this graph doesn't make that clear it should be assumed that if your graph is curved the object is accelerating we did practice that a couple weeks ago. Looking at this graph, I immediately can tell that the object changes velocity, but does so dramatically or very quickly. So that the velocity, oops, the velocity during this section is different than the velocity during this section and this section. There's abrupt changes in velocity. So, Although technically we'd say that the velocity changed, it didn't do so in a measured and smooth way. It was some kind of abrupt change. And the fact that it's flat here is a signal that that's what rest looks like. The position doesn't change. I suspect you know that, but just in case, that's the point where the object is at rest. So in this particular question, which says during which interval is the object at rest, you would say from four seconds to six seconds let me be also very clear this would not be considered the correct answer if all you did was write uh, you'd lose a point you need to indicate it's from four seconds to six seconds at minimum you need to indicate the the unit here so i know it seems silly but units need to be on every single answer that has a number that's the whole year that's not just this test so moving on, what is the velocity from t, t equals zero to t equals three? You're specifically looking for the slope. Hold on, let me do this different. Yeah. All right, so you're specifically looking for the slope. In order to get that, you're just looking for the slope anywhere during this region of the test. Although it says zero to three, that doesn't really matter. Um, it's the same slope everywhere, so it goes uh, from zero to eight meters in four seconds, so two meters per second. You want to make sure you've nailed the right answer, put the positive out there to indicate the answer is positive. Because I'm sure that if yours happens to have negative slope in those first three seconds and you don't put the negative sign, you're going to lose a point. Uh, when is the object's velocity negative? Anytime the slope is negative. Uh, you know, I don't, that's not a huge deal. From this one, it's 10 seconds to 20 seconds. So I'd put, you know, 10 to 20 seconds. And finally, what is the total distance traveled by the object? Um, this is different than the displacement. And the fact that both of these questions are here, I probably won't do that on this test. I will probably just pick one. But I also guarantee that probably the test next to you will say the opposite word. I Meaning I'll have half the test will say distance and half the test will say displacement. That allows me to reduce the number of questions on the test. And also a person who gets one wrong tends to get both wrong. But to get that answer, 
distance is how far the object traveled. And looking at the graph, it started at zero, went all the way to 20, and then went back to 10. The right answer for distance traveled would be 30 meters. But then the next question asks about displacement. And the displacement is from zero to 10 meters. So it'd be positive 10 meters. So, although I don't think you'll get both questions, it should be clear that the answer is not the same. Any question at all about that? Any question about those five questions from any of the other versions of the test? Because the graphs are just a little different, but there might be one that was more confusing than the other. Okay. Go on to the next part. Oh, go ahead. No. I'm not interested in that. Is that okay? You asked, will I ask that question, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to ask that question. Um, if you guys couldn't hear that at home, a person in class asked if, would I make you create a velocity graph from a position graph? And the answer is no, I'm not going to do that. Now, a position graph from a velocity graph? Yeah, I might do that. All right, moving along to the other graph here. Uh, it's a velocity graph. So I will say this in class, that you should identify where zero is on the vertical axis. Yes? You're seeing the amount of work you have to show. There's just not enough to do here to show that much work. There might be more on the next graph. Uh, it was asked, do you have to show your work? Uh, or how much work do you have to show? So far, I'd say there's very little work you have to show since you're mostly just reading things off the graph. I will say in class, though, that you need to identify where zero is on your graph. I'm doing that to purposely point out that when you're finding the word here, but... You want to be fully complete here. After you make the statement about the object's motion, indicating that the object had a constant acceleration, probably a good call here. Recognition that you understand that acceleration is the slope of this graph and that it's got the same slope the whole time. So question number two is specifically seeing if you know what the definition of acceleration is by saying find the rate of change of the object's velocity. If it asks, I could ask that same question by just saying what's the acceleration of the object? Either way, you're looking for the slope, which is negative two meters per second squared. Rise over run. No, I don't need to see a whole lot of work there, but if you screw it up, you're gonna look like an idiot, kinda. It's just finding slope. So if you need to show some work, show some work. You don't get bonus points for not, having, for not showing your work. It says, when is the object's velocity zero? And what is the object's acceleration at this point? There are two questions there. The big takeaway from talking with students from the last two years is they forget to answer both questions. You only get half credit if you only answer both questions. Not only do you have to repeat that the acceleration is still negative two meters per second squared, you do have to indicate that it stopped at the four second mark. I don't leave you a lot of space here to write out a full sentence, but it would be nice if you did. What is the total distance traveled by the object in the first 10 seconds? There's not a whole lot of opportunity for you to, to veer away from our only, you know, finding out the, I'm sorry, we said different. There's not a whole lot of things that you can do different besides finding the area. There are other ways to do it, but ultimately what you're very likely to have to do is find the area of each section to get the distance. I am kind of expecting to see your work on that. So one half, four times eight, or 16 meters. And over here, one half, six times negative 12, which is negative 36 meters. Add those two together um, by stripping, I'm sorry, add the absolute values together to get the total distance and you're gonna get 52 meters. 
So the total distance traveled is 52 meters. And then question number five is a question about displacement. And I do feel as though you might see both of these questions on the velocity graph. Because question number five can also be determined using just motion equations. I feel compelled to put that on the test. Even though all I'm really asking you to do is to add the two areas together while keeping the negative sign in place. So in this case, 16 minus 36 or negative 20 meters. Don't assume I'm gonna have you stay at the origin. I could say that the object started 10 meters away from the origin. And you would have to interpret the change in position as being the displacement. Staying on this, moving on to the next question. Write an equation that is a model of the object's motion from the graph above. It, I will be looking for a couple of specific things. If there is a Y and an X in your equation, you know that you're going to be in trouble. Don't do that. Please make sure you indicate what's being graphed. I don't need the entire word written out, but for this exercise, I am going to write it out. It's a velocity graph, so velocity equals. The first thing I should have here is the slope of that line, which you should have already found negative two, you do not have to put the units here, I'm just doing it to be complete, times the time, and then you should add the y-intercept here, which was eight meters per second. Yep. You will not get any points taken off if you write the letter that represents velocity and time. Number seven, if the object were to continue this motion, what would be its speed at t equals 15 seconds? It asks for speed, so it's not really dependent on whether you put a negative or a positive there. It's not asking for velocity. On the other hand, all you have to do is put in 15 for time here and compute what the velocity is. Do not be surprised, however, if I ask you where the object is at the 15 second mark. That's probably more likely what I'm going to ask this year. And just so you know, by asking that, I'm looking to see if you can transfer this information into a useful relationship that can give you the change in position. So that's what I wanna see if you can do. Can you make this mental leap? We haven't talked about it. I am trying to see if you can make this transition on your own. So you should expect there to be maybe one or two questions that are unexpected on the test but should not be too terrible for you guys who are at the top of the food chain there to figure out. All right, that's this whole thing. And it took us about 12 minutes to do it. That's me leading, the, you know, doing the whole thing and I know exactly what I'm doing, so you'd think I'd go faster. So I'm expecting this whole thing to take you about 20 minutes on the, on the actual test tomorrow. Or at least that's the kind of time I'm allotting for this activity. If I remove the position graph, what I will be doing is putting a blank graph on there and asking for you to create a position graph from the given graph. So before I go any further, are there questions on what we've just seen? Yes, sir? I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Okay, so you uh, got negative 20 meters. Yes. Final answer. Uh -huh. But um, the first half where it was a positive velocity. Yes. Um, it traveled 16 meters, and the second half it traveled negative 36. Right. And if the line started from the origin, wouldn't it just be like negative 16 meters and then negative 36 meters? No. It's not saying that the velocity started at the origin. It's saying that the object's position started at the origin. So it's, it's not shifting this graph to place the starting velocity at zero. That, that's not what it's trying to indicate. And I, I, can, I can see why you might make that mistake. So I might make it clear that the object's initial position was at the origin. So that there's no confusion there. 
Yeah, because it asks for speed, you wouldn't be graded incorrectly if you did put a positive or just put the number down. Now, if you put positive and the number, that would be bad. But if you just put the number down, that'd be fine because it's just asking for speed, how fast it's going. Yes, ma'am? The question is, how would I answer, what would I, what am I looking for if I made you use this for your, for the last question? Like, what's the change in position? What I would be looking for specifically is for you to recognize that this is the acceleration and it has a, you would place it here in this equation. And this is the initial speed, you would place it here in this equation. So I might ask, where is the object after 15 seconds? Not how fast is it going after 15 seconds? And I would expect you to be able to transfer the information from the one graph into a different motion equation to get you that answer. Any other questions about this? Would you like me to go through the process of creating the position graph from this velocity graph? Because we can do that real quick. So let's do that as a means of finishing off this. I, like I said, I think everything else that's on these pages is all the same work. So if you had difficulty with what we just talked about, I think you have something to practice. But let's just go ahead and do this real quick. Um, I know that the object is traveling backwards more than it's traveling forwards. So in creating this position graph, I am likely to uh, need more the negative side than the positive side. You guys, if I provide you a piece of graph paper, it will just be a grid on your test with squares on it. You will decide where your axes go. And that is part of the grading process to look at the decisions you would make in setting up your graph. So knowing that the object is going to travel further in the negative side suggests you would know that perhaps I need more on the negative side than the positive side. And I'd wanna see that you know that. Uh, the next thing I would look for is for you to successfully make an appropriate set of units. It's 10 seconds. So I should see 10 seconds on the position graph. It's probably not a bad idea to, to remind you that you need labels and without them you won't get full credit and those labels should include the units looking at my graph i know that i travel 16 meters forwards and 36 meters backwards so i need to go up to at least 16 from the origin so two four six eight ten twelve 14, 16. And I'm going to make a similar scale in the bottom side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I've established my scale going to 16 here and negative 20 here. Now, the way we've been trained, I've indicated to you that you just really should put a couple of dots that indicate where the object was at maybe important points in time. For example, we start with a dot at the origin because that's where it was at time equals zero. And at time equals four seconds, the object was 16 meters away from the origin. So I'm gonna go out to four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to indicate that the object was at the 16 meter mark at positive four seconds. And, and then lastly, I go all the way to the negative 20. So, and that's at 10 seconds. Now you're gonna have actual graph paper. I not so much, so I need some help to, to kind of get my line straight, but there. So, grading this graph, 
I think I've given you some of the things I'm going to be looking for so far. But because there's so much information that has to be placed on the graph correctly, it's going to be worth quite a bit of points. I'm thinking compared to the other questions, which are maybe two or three points each, this one's probably 10 points for the graph to be correct. Because there's a lot that you have to do. At this moment, I'm going to be looking at the horizontal axis, the vertical axis, labels, units, and appropriateness of your choices. And then identification of at least three or four important points on your graph. And this is still before we've even drawn in the curve, which you do last, I assume, by looking at what the velocity was at these points. For example, the velocity was eight. That should suggest a positive slope. At t equals four, the velocity was zero. I should see a flat slope. The slope of the position graph is velocity, so I'm just stepping through and putting little pieces of curve to remind me what the slope should be at these points. And then finally, at the 10 second mark, I have a velocity of negative 12, so I'm expecting it to have a steep negative slope. And now to get full credit, connecting the dots with a nice smooth curve. So I'm very likely to make you do this on the test tomorrow, as opposed to have you go through and read up a bunch of stuff off the position graph. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm not asking too much. We did some of that last week. I'm sorry, two weeks ago. And that's that. And the reason I'm choosing negative 20 as my next point is because once it moved forwards to 16 meters, it moved backwards 36 meters. That started from where it is now, which is at the 16 meter mark. So if I take 36, step back, 36 steps backwards from the 16 meter mark, I'll be at negative 20. Now, the most common mistake people made was quite literally putting 16 here and then going down to negative 36. That's, that, a lot of you did that. That suggests you don't know what's happening and you're looking for some kind of formulaic way to make your graph. Probably gonna lose some credit there. Now, I'm not sure how substantial it'll be, but that's not A-level work to me. That's more like C-level work. So if you're looking for how many points on the graph you would lose, probably be about four out of 10, maybe three out of 10. So I'm going to put, you know, to make it clear that, because you don't know what's happening. Your graph should represent what's happening, and that's what I want to see from you. All right. So... First part of the test is um, 16 multiple choice questions. My expectation is those are about a minute per question. So I'm looking at about 16 minutes, maybe 18 minutes on the multiple choice. Two are two answer multiple choice. You guys have seen those on the MyAP now a little bit. You've seen what they are. You have to get two of the answers correct in order for you to get the question right. All of them have four selections. The next is going to be a velocity graph interpretation. This is heavy on vocabulary. All vocabulary will be asked in line here if it's not on the multiple choice. You've done all the things you need to do if you can do what we just performed. There's nothing more I'm going to ask you. But be aware that in last year's test, this made up about half of the credit for this test, with the multiple choice being about a quarter and the problem being about a quarter. There's just a lot of things for me to ask here. You should expect me to have you make an equation and then use that equation.
It's also very likely you will make a position graph. Question three, or part three of the test. Is there will be a problem? And you've seen what they look like. You've done some practice. They were all on mastering. It's not gonna be any more difficult than one of those, but it'll be at least that difficult. You should expect it to have a minimum of two parts. I expect this to be about 15 to 18 minutes. This 20 minutes. This five minutes. The problem should not take you long. If it's taking you more than five minutes, you're taking too long. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the way we're going to set up. This is what's on your test tomorrow. There are three parts to your test. And I'll talk a little bit about what each part is, but this is really it. Um, 16 multiple choice questions. Last year, the average on multiple choice was usually around a 40 to a 50%. I'm bringing this up because in the beginning of the year, I make the multiple choice only worth about a quarter of the test grade. And then about halfway through the, the semester, I increase how much the multiple choice is worth. Judging by your My AP scores, which is hovering around a 7 out of 15 on average, looks like you guys are living right up to that you know, expectation of about a 50% on your multiple choice. That can be devastating to your grades. So... Tomorrow on a multiple choice, I'm going to tell you this before you even take the test. I am actively trying to trick you on multiple choice. Even though I didn't write most of them. Most of them will come from AP, but I am actively trying to trick you. Of the 16 multiple choice questions, two of them will have two answers. You've seen what this looks like now on my, my AP. I'm going to do the same thing on a test tomorrow where you'll have to se select two answers for two of those questions. If you don't get both of them right, then the whole thing is wrong. They are all for selection, multiple choice with A, B, C, and D. Any questions about that? Go ahead. Yep. I expect that's going to take you about 15 to 18 minutes. That's really all the time you have for multiple choice. You have to move quickly through multiple choice. After that is going to be the velocity graph interpretation section. You've seen a little bit about what that's going to look like. It's not the same tomorrow. I will tell you that there will be a time where you have to give me a written description about what's on the graph, but I've streamlined it a little bit because you're making the position graph. It is also very focused on vocabulary, and I might be asking some questions that are not exactly like you saw in your practice test, but are things we talked about in class. So if you're hoping that your test is going to be an exact duplicate of the practice test, no. I just gave you last year's tests. This year, the test is different. How much different? Well, I am going to focus on your ability to transition from a velocity graph to a position graph. That's going to be there. And I'm going to focus on your ability for interpretation, telling me what's happening and trying to explain it. I am expecting you to be able to use an equation you derive from the graph to do something else. To talk about something that might have happened at another point in time. And you might have to do that more than once. I will be requiring you to make a position graph from the velocity graph. All I will provide you with is, is a section of graph paper. You will have to provide the whole thing. After that, there's a third part of the test, which is a problem. You'll have to do, uh, it'll use the five motion equations. It's nothing, li it's nothing different than what you did in mastering or what you did last week for our practice. There will be two parts to the question. They will be related. I expect that to take you about five minutes. But that's your test tomorrow. I expect it will take the entire class period. Tomorrow when you come in, I would strongly encourage you to be prepared to take your test when you walk in. If you're going to look up the test on Canvas and do it on your own paper, which is fine by me, then the only thing you have to do is have your phone out. 
and of course paper and pen and all that. If you're going to be using the paper test that I provide, then I will bring it to you. So when you log into Canvas, it will tell you which test you have to do. It's gonna say something about your last name because there will be more than one test posted. But if you're taking a paper test, I will bring you the version that you have to have. Either way, the expectation is that everybody out there has a different version of the test with the pe compared with the people sitting at your same table. And you guys at home, you'll be told which version of the test you have to do. Now, that being said, you have to submit the test using Canvas or submit your paper test. So your phone has to be out in front of you either way. And it should be arm's length of the way. You can have your note card out, but it has to be under your phone until after I tell you to take it out. Yes? No, I try to stay with the same symbology all the time. Also, I okay. Okay, I'm getting a question about the my AP. So, um, you guys at home, so yes, you can. But let me do it. Give me a second. I'm going to pull up my AP myself. So, you guys at home, just give me one second. The problem says it travels. Can you say all of that all over again so I can, because I was not writing it down when you said those things. Okay, so it basically said an object travels two meters in the first second, four meters in the second second, and then six meters in the third second. All right. Now, just based on what you've told me, um, if we're trying to figure out what this object is doing, uh, these are displacements. Each one of those is a displacement. So after the three seconds, the object has traveled a total of 12 meters. Do you see that okay? Yes. Okay. So it's trying to figure out if the, uh, we're trying to figure out if the object has a constant acceleration. Is that what it's trying to, is that what the question is? Yes. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to, to attack this and, and, convey what I think you need to do. I'm going to do it this way, not because I think it's the best way, but because it is a way. For the object to have a constant acceleration, it would have to be a line like this for the velocity graph. And that would mean that in the first second, the area would have to be, you know, two. In the second second, the whole area would have to be six. And in the third second, the whole area would have to be 12. Is there three triangles that do that? That would have the same slope. Now, I don't know if that's the right way to frame the problem, but it is but it is what's being indicated by the information given. Now, you have a couple different ways you can do this problem, but I think the easiest way would be to consider a motion equation. I think that would be the easiest way and see if you get the same acceleration for each of the intervals. And the motion equation I would use is one that has everything in it except for final velocity, because you have everything else. And I would consider what you would get in the first second, second second, and third second for the acceleration. Unfortunately, the bell just rang, so I can't finish this, but I will finish this on this video and post it this afternoon. You need to know that the slope of a position graph is the velocity. And you need to be able to determine on a position graph when the velocity is zero. To get full credit on this question, I will point out that it says during which interval is the object at rest? you have to say from four to six seconds. If you don't have the units, it's incorrect. Any numerical answer that's given on the test tomorrow without units will be incorrect. So every one of these is worth more than one point. You will lose at least one point per instance that there's not units. 
So please be aware, that can be devastating to your grade. What is the velocity from t equals zero to t equals three? That's me specifically asking if you know how to determine velocity from a position graph, that it comes from the slope. And it went from zero to three, but the velocity is the same everywhere from zero to four seconds. So it doesn't really matter how you decide to take the slope as long as it's a slope of something that has to do with this section of the curve. So it goes from 10 to two in four seconds. So that's negative eight meters in four seconds. So I'm expecting negative two meters per second. If you did the first test, you know that the velocity was positive. I would expect that you should understand that velocity requires direction. So I'm looking to see that you put the positive sign or the negative sign or said forwards, backwards. Some way of putting it out there. If you don't, I'm not convinced you know that it's a vector. You're trying to convince me of what you know. So make sure that you convince me. This one's easy because it's negative. But be aware, you won't just get a free ride if it's positive and you don't put the positive sign out there. Does everybody understand that? When is the object's velocity negative? In this graph, there's more than one place where the velocity is negative and you'd have to indicate both times when it's negative. So zero to four seconds and 16 seconds to 20 seconds. So zero to four here and then 16 seconds to 20 seconds. Since there's more than one version of the test, some people only have one answer there because they might only have a negative for a little bit. It's just the way it is. So the next part, what is the total distance traveled by the object? And then question five, what is the displacement? We all should know by now that total distance and total displacement are different things. I do want you to understand that if you answer one of these wrong, you're probably answering both of these wrong. So it is possible I will only have one of these on the actual test, because that's all I really need is one of them to know whether you know about both of them. But going back over here, it is prudent that you recognize the difference that the object went from 10 to two, that's eight meters, and then from two to 32, that's 30 additional meters, and then from 32 to 16, that's 16 more meters. So it traveled eight meters plus uh, 30 meters plus 16 meters. That's the total distance traveled by the object. So I'm thinking that's 54 meters. So in that answer, for distance, 54 meters. Any questions about that? All right. Displacement, in many ways, is easier. It went from 8 to 16. The displacement is positive 8 meters. It is wrong without the positive sign. All right, that's the position graph. It's not particularly interesting, which is why it's very likely not gonna be on the test, but I wanna make sure that I've had an opportunity to talk to you about it. I'm probably more likely to focus on the velocity graph and have you create a position graph. But are there any questions about these five exercises? Do you think um, there would be an instance where we have to make a velocity graph from a position graph? No, I will not ask that on the test tomorrow. I'm not saying that AP won't, won't ask it, but I don't, I don't want to ask it. So it's, I will not put that on the test tomorrow. And I, I probably will, you know, I want you to know that a curved position graph means the object is accelerating. I'm not that interested in one of these flat velocity graphs, which is the result of this. I just don't want to do it. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is probably where I will be spending more time on the test. And I say things like probably all that, the test is already written, so it's not like I don't know what's on it. I'm just talking like that to make it sound like I'm thinking about what I'm gonna put on it. Um, I've said this before, but I wanna reiterate it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
you're right. The displacement was positive six, not positive eight. I misread my own graph. Thank you for keeping me honest. I will likely say at the beginning of class to identify where zero is on your axes for your graph. At least I will try to remember to do that. I'm saying that because the graphing package doesn't necessarily highlight where zero is. So I put the graphs on the test, but they don't always put that out there. Second period, by, by the time usually second period gets here, I remember stuff like that. First period is one that's really in danger of not having that reminded to them. But let me just be honest here. You should do that. Get, get, be prepared, put something on, because I'm allowing you to have a note card, put something on the note card that tells you to make sure I identify where zero is on your position and on your velocity graph. Just so you don't make a mistake, because when it comes to calculating the area, you've got to get that right. When I ask you to describe the object's motion, I am very particular about what I want here, but let me start off by saying you will not get full credit if you don't use complete sentences. Anytime you're asked to describe or to write about something, it has to be in complete sentences or you will lose credit. That includes proper syntax, capitalization of the first letter, periods, commas, noun verb agreement. Believe it or not, on the sections of the exam where you have to write out paragraphs, you are graded on your syntax and prose as if it's an English essay. So anytime you're asked to write a couple of sentences in here, I have to do the same. So don't write it like you're texting me, LOL. In this one, I want specific things mentioned about the object's motion. You should tell me whether it's traveling in a positive direction or a negative direction. You can use the words forwards or backwards if you like, left or right, up or down, I don't care. But you need to pick some way of describing the direction the object's moving. And you should describe whether it's speeding up or slowing down. If it stops, you should identify when. And clearly, if it stops, you should identify what it was doing before it stopped and what it's doing after it stopped. So for the example I'm seeing here, this object was moving in the negative direction for five seconds. It was slowing down until it stopped. And then it started going in the positive direction for another five seconds while speeding up. It should clearly indicate when the object was slowing down, when the object was speeding up, when the object was traveling forwards, and when the object was traveling backwards. Use data from the graph. Tell me when it stopped, five seconds. And I don't care, tell me how fast it was going if you want. It was going backwards at five meters per second, slowing down until it stopped at five seconds. That's fine. If you leave out anything regarding direction or speeding up or slowing down, you will not be able to get full credit. This is probably worth five or six points. Find the rate of change of the object's velocity for the time when the velocity is changing. Well, the velocity is changing over the whole interval. I just need the slope. This question is asking for you to find the acceleration by finding the slope of this graph. And since it goes from negative 5 to 0 in 5 seconds, the acceleration is positive 1 meter per second squared. It's wrong without the positive, and it's wrong without the units. Somebody in first period asked, how much work do we have to show? That's it. This isn't middle school. I don't care if, you know, I don't need to see all of your work in finding the slope. However, if you get it wrong, I have nothing to go by. The only way you can get partial credit on one of these is if you have information for me to base my partial credit upon. So if you don't show any work, you lose all credit. If you show work, I can award partial credit if I can figure out what your mistake was. But be aware, the only way to get partial credit is to show your work. And any one of these that's worth more than one point, there is the potential for partial credit, which is everything on this page is worth more than one point. So, when is the object's velocity zero, and what is the object's acceleration at this point? This is, for me, a way of finding out if you understand that just because the object's not moving doesn't mean it doesn't have acceleration. But there are two questions there. You must answer both of them. 
answering one of them will give you only half of the credit. So the object's velocity is zero at five seconds. So I would say, it's, I, I would encourage you to write sentences. It's stopped at five seconds with an acceleration of positive one meter per second squared. I don't care if this is a full sentence. You could write five seconds, comma, one meter per second squared. But some questions sound more like they require a verbal response than others. What is the total distance traveled by the object in the first 10 seconds? Well, this is where you have a little work to do. So I'll put my line right back there. There's more than one way to do this, but finding the area under the curve is the way I trained you. So that might be easier. It's going to be one half times five times five, which in this case is positive 12.5 meters. I'm sorry, negative 12.5 meters because this is negative. And this side is the same. One half times five times positive five, which is positive 12.5 meters. Any questions about where I got those? That means the distance traveled by the object in the first 10 seconds is 25 meters. It's distance, so it's not a vector. I don't need the sign. If the object were to be, have begun its motion from the origin, what is its displacement after 10 seconds? I hope you understand that by asking for displacement, I don't need to tell you that it started from the origin. Because just asking for the change in position, I didn't ask where the object was after 10 seconds. But either way, in this case, it's zero. If you want to put zero meters, fine, but it's zero. Write an equation that has a model of the object's motion from the graph above. Of course, anybody who puts a Y or an X in their equation is getting it wrong. You don't have to write out velocity. I'm going to, but you don't have to. It should have the slope. You don't have to write out the units and everything like I am. I'm just being thorough. But the equation should be complete. So if you put V and T there, fine. It's worth full credit. If the object were to continue this motion, what would be its speed at T equals 15 seconds? That is just taking the relationship you just made and putting in the time. So one meter per second squared times 15 seconds minus five. So it uh, looks to me like it's 10 meters per second. I am less likely to ask this question than I am to ask something a little different. I am more likely to ask where the object is after 15 seconds. And I'll tell you why. I want to see if you can take the pieces of information here and with them use a different motion relationship to figure out something different. So I am far more interested in perhaps having you extend the knowledge to some different kind of circumstance. Any question about that? All right. I'm going to ask you to make a position graph from the velocity graph. So this one is a fine example to do that from I want to talk to you about the things that I would expect to see in that because we've done it before, but it has been a couple weeks. So let's take a look at this graph for a moment and what I would expect to see in a position graph. First, in order for it to be a position graph, I would have to indicate where the object is at time zero. 
So I'd have to tell you something. And I already have. I've indicated in one of the questions that the object started from the origin. This particular problem, has the object moved the same distance forwards as backwards? It's unlikely I will replicate that on the test tomorrow. You should expect you're going to move more in one direction than the other, like you do in problem one and problem three that I give you. Part of the reason for that is to make sure you take that into account when creating your position graph, shifting it if you need more space in the positive or more space in the negative. Either way, the very first thing I will look for is to indicate that you recognize the time interval has to be the same. Next, I will be looking to see that you label both axes correctly with the appropriate units. So, correctly setting up appropriate axes, labeling them and using the units, I'm thinking that's three or four points right there, suggesting that drawing this graph is worth a lot more points than the other parts of the problem. The next thing you have to do, of course, is recognize what's happening so that you have enough in your graph or enough space in your graph to make this work. <coughs> the truth is, everything in this graph takes place in the negative side. So there's no reason why you shouldn't shift it in such a way that you do that. I have to go all the way to 12 and a half. So I'm going to make enough space to do that. Now let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. I will expect you to place appropriate dots at locations that you know about. For example, the object begins at the origin, so a dot there. After five seconds, the object's located 12 and a half meters away from the origin. So you're going to be presented with graph paper to do this, but I need something to help me kind of line it all up. 12 and a half would be right about there. That's at five, so. Make a dot there. And then we know it's back at the origin at 10. I'll be looking for some indication that you have identified what the slope is at those three places. It's negative at the start. It's flat at five seconds. And it's positive at the end. And you should connect this together appropriately with a smooth curve. I think it should look better than what I just drew. But I'm not going to draw again. I expect this to be worth quite a few points compared to other parts of the problem. I also expect it'll take you about five to seven minutes to make it. Um, you will not have more time than that on tomorrow's test. Any question about what I've just done here? Go ahead. Making this graph should be about five minutes. Okay. That's my expectation. I think this whole section is probably more like 15 to 20. It's taken us 19 minutes, but I know exactly what I'm doing, what the questions were. So I, I assume that I can go a little faster than you can. On the other hand, I have to say everything out loud and do it in an obvious way. So perhaps you smarties will go even faster than me. All right. Let me tell you what else on the test. But before I do, are there any questions about this that you'd like me to go over or I haven't fully explained? Well, mine, I have a question. Go it's ahead. not like about the actual, like the information that we just went over but the uh, turning it in I accidentally submitted my extra credit into this assignment instead of the instead of this that's no big deal just send me a canvas message and i'll take care of it yeah, I
think about it, but I don't, I don't know if you saw it. So I just wanted to make sure. All right. I, yeah, I was answering Canvas messages last night, but then I started watching something on television and I stopped. So that's on me, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll make sure all the, I try to get them all done during the day. So I should have them all answered by the end of the day today. Okay. Thank you. How are you supposed to submit the, um, the extra, um, the test because there's no submit button for ours. For the test? Well, for the practice test and the, um, the, also the, um, mastering extra credit questions. That's my mistake. I'll make sure, well, the, the mastering isn't due till tomorrow because that's when the test, the, the mastering extra credit isn't due till tomorrow. So that I probably just didn't put a submit button on there. I'll make sure one shows up for tomorrow. Right. I didn't know when the test was going to be until the end of last week, so I didn't make a submission for it. But I thought there was a submission for this. If there's not, I'll change and that. Then, I may be just mistaken because I remember. I just remember the master one. All right, I'll look and check. I'm going to write it down, though, so I don't forget. I don't write stuff down anymore. It doesn't happen. All right. Does anybody have any questions over the mastering that you'd like to talk? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is the memorization check for the equations? The question was, when was the memorization check for the motion equations? I should do it right this minute. But I'm not. I'm going to do it the first two minutes of class tomorrow. And you're going to grade it. So basically tomorrow, I'm going to have a section on your test that's blank, and I'm going to have you write out the, the motion equations. Then you're immediately going to take out your note card and check yours. And after that, you'll start your test. Basically, I want to know if you have them memorized, but for the test, I will let you have a note card. Does that make sense? Now, if you want to know how that's going to be done specifically, it's really, really simple. You're going to write them in pen, and then you're going to grade it in a red pen. You'll circle each one that is correct based on your motion equation card. And when they're all, if you circle all five of them, you're good. I will watch everybody do it, so it should be fine. But we'll see. Does that make sense? Okay. But when you're actually taking the test, you get your note card. And after this test, you'll have your AP equation sheet, which you, I will allow you to have for every test in here from this point forward. So, you know, the note card is because I want you to have them in your head because it makes you faster. That's all. Okay, any questions on mastering? I didn't think they were all that tough, but I think I did a lot of them already. Any questions on my AP? Okay. Then 